Hello, you're very welcome to this presentation about the BSc Honours in Radiation Therapy. My name is Michelle Leach and I'm an Associate Professor in Radiation Therapy and also Head of the Discipline of Radiation Therapy here at Trinity College in Dublin. So when you mention the word radiation to the general population, most of the time it conjures up in their minds quite negative connotations, unfortunately. And in fact, it's not uncommon for most people to consider that radiation is the main cause of, ca of cancer rather than treating cancer. But radiation therapy does exactly that. It is a specialized branch of medicine that's concerned with the treatment of cancer or malignant disease using radiation. The person who delivers that therapy is called a radiation therapist. And that is a title that you will have if you complete this course successfully. We often get asked, how is radiation therapy different from chemotherapy? So chemotherapy is what we call a systemic treatment. So when someone receives chemotherapy, it treats all of the cells uh, of their body. Whereas radiation therapy is a very localized treatment and will only treat the area towards which it is actually targeted. And it's interesting to know that up to 50% of cancer patients will require radiation therapy at some point during their cancer treatment. We also often get asked, what is the relationship of radiation therapy to therapeutic radiography? And the answer is that they are one and the same. Therapeutic radiography is just the United Kingdom's term for radiation therapy. How is radiation therapy related to diagnostic or general radiography? Well, it isn't um, in, it, in reality. Um, the main differences are that in radiation therapy, we treat almost exclusively cancer patients, whereas in diagnostic radiography, you will meet patients from, from all different, with all different um, uh, pathologies and all different diseases. In radiation therapy, we use very, very high energy x-rays to treat cancer. And in diagnostic radiography, uh, much lower uh, energy x-rays and much lower energy radiation is used to diagnose disease. And in some cases, no radiation is used at all in the cases of magnetic resonance imaging, for example. So they are the main differences between the two. Our internationally recognized title is called Radiation Therapist or RTT. Um, but just to note that there are, even in Europe alone, 28 titles for our profession. So as I said, radiation therapy is a very localized treatment. So we're using high energy, uh, actually potentially lethal doses of radiation in order to destroy malignant tumors. And that's extremely important because being um, precise and accurate is one of the main attributes of a radiation therapist. One thing that we always have to remember is that tumors don't exist in isolation. Uh, there is not just a tumor on its own. A tumor is actually inside a person and inside a patient that radiation therapists care for. So the goal in radiation therapy is first to target the radiation to cancer cells and also try and keep the dose to normal cells as low as possible. And we do that by basically going through a very rigorous pretreatment process where the actual tumor, as you can see in red here, is targeted by several beams, as you can see in yellow here. Then we move into the delivery phase on uh, units called linear accelerators. And the effect of radiation therapy is actually at the level of the cell. And how it acts is that it causes irreparable damage to the gen genetic material of the cell. So the cancer cells will die as a result, but normal cells can recover. So what does a radiation therapist do? A radiation therapist is an integral member of the radiation oncology multidisciplinary team. And they have responsibilities for the planning and the delivery of radiation therapy treatment. And from a psychosocial perspective, they're the main contact person for patients and their families during the course of treatment because we see the patients every single day. And we're involved in all aspects of the treatment process. So you're involved in both technical care and also in psychosocial care. So we just take a closer look at the pre-treatment phase and what we do during pre-treatment. On the left here, you see that we're making a mask for a patient who is going to be attending for uh, treatment to the head and neck region. So that could be a tumor of the larynx, of the nasopharynx, or of the upper esophagus, for example. And on the right, you see a patient lying in what looks like a quite a strange position um, because they're going to receive radiation therapy to the thorax or the chest area. 
So this person may be um, presenting with breast cancer or a tumor of the lung or a tumor of the esophagus. And again, this patient has to be immobilized or kept in the same position every single day for treatment. Once positioning and immobilization is complete, we move on to pretreatment imaging and planning. So the radiation therapist is responsible for uh, acquiring CT and MR images that are utilized in order to calculate the dose to the patient for their treatment. So on the bottom left, you can see um, this is a CT scan of a pelvis and the different colors basically show the different doses that are going to the different regions of the pelvis for that treatment. So this is a, a prostate cancer treatment. So where you see the red color on the left is the patient's prostate and that's receiving a very, very high dose. And then you see uh, kind of splayed out green and blue dose. And that's basically low dose that is being administered to the patient because of the entry and exit of the treatment beams. And similarly on the right, we see in this um, case of the CNS or of the brain central nervous system, we see again in red, the area that needs to be treated to a very high dose and the rest of the normal tissue is receiving a low dose in blue and in green. And again, if we look on the left, we can see there, this, these are the radiation therapists in action um, and they are positioning a patient in this case uh, for a breast cancer treatment. And on the right, you see the radiation therapist working outside the treatment room at the console area where we manage the treatment unit. And again, just to remember that the treatment unit is a very sophisticated piece of equipment called a linear accelerator. So how do you know if this course is going to be right for you? Um, so radiation therapists do need to be multi-skilled professionals. Uh, you do obviously have to have an interest in science, but you also have to have an interest in caring for people because we are therapists. Um, so you do need a very high degree of technical knowledge that you're going to be taught on this program. Um, and you need to be someone who is precise, accurate and um, and gives a lot of attention to detail. So we like to say um, you have to be a bit of a perfectionist to know if this course is right for you. Um, and also radiation therapists have to have excellent people skills. Um, and again, both the technical and the people skills will, will be taught to you during this program. So just some facts, I suppose, and uh, some statistics about our um, course. So our um, course code in the CEO is TR055. Um, we anticipate in 2021 that we will remain at 30 places because of the situation with COVID-19 at the moment. Um, the duration of the course is four years. And for the CEO this year in 2020, the points were 543 in round one. And um, to my knowledge, we didn't get to it, get to a round two. Um, the special entry requirements is that you need to have a H4 in one of physics, chemistry, biology or physics and chemistry combined. Another thing to note is that all students are required to undergo vetting by Angarda Shikana um, before they enter the program. Um, and that's extremely important because we're obviously working with a vulnerable population. You'll also be asked to confirm your immunization status from childhood um, and you will also uh, require vaccinations for a disease known as hepatitis B, which is standard for all healthcare workers. Um, you'll also be asked as a student to join our Irish Professional Society, the Irish Institute of Radiography and Radiation Therapy, or the IIRT, and that's a charge of €40, Euro, which covers four years. And also you'll be asked to join our European Professional Society, ESTRO, the European Society of Radiation Therapy and Oncology, and that's a fee of €60. Euro. Obviously, during any health professional course, there are a number of clinical placements that have to be um, undertaken. And some of these clinical placements will take place outside Dublin because we utilize all of the radiation therapy departments in the country. And so just to be aware at the outset that you will incur additional travel and accommodation costs because of that. So here is the course context, content and here are the subjects or the modules by year. So in the first uh, two years, we focus a lot on the basic sciences. So biology, chemistry, radiation physics, physiology and biochemistry. You also have anatomy, um, radiographic anatomy and cadaver anatomy in both first and second year. Um, in the first year as well, you are introduced to psychology and communication, which carries over into the second year. And there is a, a module called principles and practice of cancer care, which actually goes through the four years. Clinical placement also goes through the four years. 
and in um, from second year on, we have a very, very strong focus on research in this program. Um, and at the end, in fourth year, you will complete a capstone project, which is a research dissertation or thesis. So the Trinity graduate attributes um, are fourfold and they are to act responsibly, to think independently, to communicate effectively and to develop continuously. And really this course in, in radiation therapy um, brings all of those attributes together because these are attributes that you need as a health professional. You must act responsibly and always in the interest of your patient. You have to think independently. You have to think on your feet when you're working in a clinical environment and you have to be able to see, critically analyze and see what is right and what is wrong about your practice. You have to be able to communicate effectively with both patients and their families, as well as your colleagues within the multidisciplinary team. And as healthcare professionals, we always have to develop continuously. Radiation therapy is a very fast moving profession uh, with a lot of new technical advances year on year. So we always have to keep up to date with such developments. So just a few words about your clinical practice placement. Um, in total, we have about 40 weeks clinical placement over the four years, um, and that equates to 1200 placement hours, um, which is a stipulation by our regulatory authority called CRU. Um, so in the fresher years, so in the first and second year, we have shorter introductory placements, and then we have significant clinical placements in the latter two years, so third and fourth years, or the sophister years, as they're called here in Trinity. One thing to note is that a substantial amount of clinical placement takes place during the holiday period, particularly the summer between third and fourth year. And as I mentioned earlier, that you will be placed in radiation therapy departments um, around the country. Um, and remember that there are associated additional costs for those placements. Um, and with all things going well, um, with the, hopefully the demise of COVID-19, we do have uh, the option for students to undertake a clinical placement in a European radiation therapy department in the summer of third year. And that's with our Erasmus partners in Italy. So the types of assessment we use on this program are quite varied. Um, you are required to pass assessments in both theoretical and clinical areas in order to progress from one year to another. The majority of subjects on this program are assessed through continuous assessments, and that's through both individual and group projects, through practical assessments so that we can see that you, you are able to complete the practical component. Uh, we, ha like all Trinity, pro uh, all Trinity programs, have a capstone project in the final year, and the, in our case, that's a research thesis. You will complete a lot of clinical case studies, and then we use a lot of online assessments as well, like blogs and wikis. There are some written examinations in some subjects and just to note that your final degree award is based on your performance in both sophister years, so in both third and fourth year. The career opportunities for radiation therapists are very uh, positive. So if you want to stay within Ireland, we're expanding radiation services throughout the country. So there are locations in Cork, Galway, Limerick, Waterford and Dublin. So we have really good prospects for future graduates if you want to remain in Ireland. If you wish to travel, this qualification is also recognised internationally. Um, and we have quite a number of graduates uh, all over the world, Canada, Australia, New Zealand um, and, uh, and the Middle East. But um, you should be aware that every country has, of course, has its own registration process. But our students tend to find that relatively straightforward because they have this uh, internationally recognised degree. The majority of graduates from, from our uh, course work in the field. We do have some who go to do other things afterwards in, in master programmes, but the majority of our graduates would work in radiation therapy. Um, and most of our graduates secure employment very soon after graduation. So some of the questions we're most commonly asked about radiation therapy is, is it safe to work as a radiation therapist? Because of course you are working with radiation. So the answer to, to that is yes, it's very safe to work as a radiation therapist because the machines that I showed you earlier, the linear accelerators, create their radiation using electricity. So as soon as they are switched off and the treatment has been delivered to the patient, the radiation is basically gone. Um, so you're probably more likely to get a higher dose of radiation working as a flight attendant or a pilot than you are as a radiation therapist. And another very common question that we get asked is, isn't it a really sad job if you're working with patients with cancer all of the time? Um, and of course, there are occasions when it can be very, very difficult. 
um, and it can be emotional because uh, we do form attachments with place with patients and sometimes when their outcome is not going to be positive it is really difficult but the one thing that I will say is that it's a real privilege to be able to help patients at really what is probably the most uh, difficult and vulnerable times of their lives and um, that gives a huge sense of job satisfaction and I don't think there's too many jobs that you can actually or too many careers that you can actually say that that it's actually a privilege to work in but this is certainly one of them so if you want some further details on the course uh, please go to our website it's there on the screen for you um, or you can email our um, dedicated email address for undergraduate queries which is tcdrt at tcd.ie and just to fi finish up, I I'd like to just say that while you're at Trinity, you, you will have a really diverse educational experience because at Trinity, we have quite a lot of international students as well. So in 2018, 19, uh, they came from over 122 uh, countries and represented about a quarter of our total student body. If you want to learn more about radiation therapy, um, Claire Poole, who is my colleague and myself, we developed a an op massive open online course or MOOC on radiation therapy on the Future Learn platform for Trinity. Um, so if you go to our website um, and go to outreach on our website, you'll find out more about this. Um, and it's a course that was developed for patients and their families and the general public to basically teach people more about radiation therapy and hopefully dispel some of the myths that I referred to earlier about radiation therapy. So if you're interested in this course but you're not sure, it's probably good to have a look at that because it gives you some more information about what we actually do every day. And with that, I'd like to say thank you very much and I hope that you enjoy the rest of the open day.